Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel. Guess what's gonna hit the fan? Anybody got an idea out there of what, what's gonna hit the, uh, the proverbial fan? Anybody got an idea? Look, I say this not at all uh, to engage in hyperbole or to startle anybody. That's not the purpose, but I'm gonna be intellectually honest as always. And I'm gonna continue sharing my message that I just don't see how the FTX crypto contagion doesn't spread. What's that going to mean for all of your crypto holdings? What's it going to mean for your XRP price? Probably it's going to go down. Unless I'm wrong and fine. I admit I could be. Like, I don't pretend to know for sure. I'm not pretending to be a, some sort of, you know, fake guru, which is, you know, what all sorts of crypto YouTubers do, I guess. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm more like I'm just a dude on the internet named Moon Family Sedan currently anyway, who may or may not be wearing pants. You don't even know my current pants situation. You know, damn advice for me. I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying though. I'm um, fine. Maybe it doesn't. I don't see how. And, and and I think by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of why I've been stating for over a month now. I don't see how this doesn't get worse before it gets better. And the reason I'm saying this um, specifically is, I mean, there are a number of ways this could go, but specifically Genesis. You know, it's it's the uh, the brokerage firm, which has massive implications on an institutional level. Uh, major crypto brokerage firm, and they're insolvent. I don't know how they don't go bankrupt. Like we're like that hasn't happened yet, but like this thing's getting strung out. And the fact that we haven't seen the other shoe drop doesn't mean that everything's just magically okay. This is massive, and I think you're going to understand again by the end of this video what the implications are. Like this didn't go away. Like I've been saying, this never went away. Just because you haven't heard additional news for weeks on end, mo mostly anyway, it's mostly been silent. Well, we got a big one today. Cameron Winklevoss, you know, one of the founders of cryptocurrency exchange Gemini, is not happy with Barry Silbert, the uh, founder of Digital Currency Group, which owns uh, a well, number of firms, including Genesis. And <laughs> Cameron Winklevoss, the way he's portraying this is that there are serious problems and that Barry Silbert is not behaving ethically and forthright in terms of what's going on here. So I'm going to share with you all the specifics, but, uh, and, and then look, honestly, in terms of price action, this is one of the most important things that you should be informed on. Uh, before going further, though, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I'm not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so earlier today, there was this tweet from Cameron Winklevoss, and um, he shared it with his 710,000 followers all up on the Twitters. And he wrote, earn update, an open letter to Barry Silbert. Now, just to make sure everybody's caught up to speed. Cryptocurrency exchange Gemini has what they called their earn program. And with the earn program, you hand over the keys to your crypto. And then Gemini hands the keys over also to another entity. And then they take your crypto and you earn interest on it. And what they do with it, you're not necessarily in the know. Um, to what degree you know or don't know, I'm not really clear. I, I'm, just, I'm not aware currently of the specifics of that. Um, but, but either way, it's something that you agreed to. And as long as they behaved within the, 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 the par, par, um, parameters of you know, whatever the signed agreement is, then I don't think that necessarily anyway, and I can be swayed with additional information, but I don't think that Jim and I necessarily did anything wrong. But if they acted outside of agreed upon parameters, then of course I would think that that's disgusting and repulsive and they should be held accountable. So it just kind of depends. I don't pretend to have all of the information here, but all the people that, um, that had money in this earn program with Jim and I, they're, they're currently screwed. It doesn't mean that they will be forever, but they might be uh, because Genesis is the entity that was managing the, uh, you know, earning the, the interest for Jim and I customers and, and Genesis is insolvent. They had exposure to a number of firms, including FTX, which was a gigantic Ponzi scheme. So you can see how this is problematic. And we've known this is a problem for like the last six weeks or so. We just haven't seen what the fallout's actually going to be here. Well, it's pretty bad. So here's what Cameron Winklevoss wrote. And he wrote this again directly to Barry Silbert, uh, founder of Digital Currency Group, which is also the parent company of Genesis. So he owns it all. Barry Silver does. So Winklevoss wrote the following. Barry, today marks 47 days since Genesis halted withdrawals. I am writing on behalf of more than 340,000 Earn users 
who are looking for answers. These users aren't just numbers on a spreadsheet. They are real people. A single mom who lent her son's education money to you. A father who lent his son's bar mitzvah money to you. A husband and wife who lent their life savings to you. A school teacher who lent his children's college funds to you. A policeman and so many more. Altogether, these people entrusted more than $900 million of their assets to you. They deserve concrete answers, and we are here to get them. For the past six weeks, we have done everything we can to engage with you in a good faith and collaborative manner in order to reach a consensual resolution for you to pay back the $900 million that you owe while helping you preserve your business. And so I'll pause to note here, Barry Silbert, also a victim of the Ponzi scheme FTX. I'm not pretending that he's not. So in terms of after all of the fallout, like who's behaving respectably and who isn't, it's very clear, and you'll see as we go through this, Barry Silbert, according to Winklevoss here, is being a scumbag. And, and, and I can't. there's no way for me to know the, the, the specifics. I can't verify any of this, but I, I'm just telling you. And, and Barry Silbert did respond to this too. But, um, you know, he, he, but even if you're a victim of FTX and you're Bar Barry Silbert, you still have to deal with the situation. And Cameron Winklevoss, from his perspective, states that he's just not dealing with it. There's nothing happening moving forward, just like delaying the inevitable. Here, effectively. So anyway, uh, Winklevoss continues here. We appreciate that there are startup costs to any restructuring. And, and at times, things don't go as fast as we would all like. However, it is now becoming clear that you have been engaging in bad faith stall tactics. And folks, I just want to say again, this can only be stalled for so long. The other shoe's going to drop unless there's some sort of magical bailout, which actually works. And I don't know what that would even look like. I can't even imagine. But if that, great. If it happens, great. If that doesn't happen, the hole in the balance sheet doesn't just suddenly cease to exist. I don't see how it doesn't get way worse. And if I look, I could be wrong. I, I hope I'm wrong. But in terms of what's probable, that's what it looks like to me. You guys have to tell me if you think I'm way off the rails here, but I just don't see why it would be unreasonable for me to suppose that this is what's most probable at this juncture in time. He continues. For example, on December 2nd, we expressed our belief that getting everyone in a room together as soon as possible will be the most productive path forward, uh, a path towards reaching a solution, a resolution. Uh, you agreed, but stated you would only do so after there was a proposal on the table. On December 17th, a proposal was delivered to you. On December 25th, Christmas Day, an updated version of this proposal was delivered to you. Despite this, you continue to refuse to get into a room with us to hash out a resolution. In addition, you continue to refuse to agree to a timeline with key milestones. Every time we ask you for tangible engagement, you hide behind lawyers, investment bankers, and process. After six weeks, your behavior is not only completely unacceptable, it is unconscionable. The idea in your head that you can quietly hide in your ivory tower and that this will all just magically go away or that this is someone else's problem is pure fantasy. To be clear, this mess is entirely of your own making. Digital Currency Group, of which you are the founder and CEO, owes Genesis, its wholly owned subsidiary, $1.675 billion. This is money that Genesis owes to earn users and other creditors. You took this money, the money of school teachers, to fuel greedy share buybacks illiquid venture in investments, and kamikaze grayscale nav trades that ballooned the fee-generating assets under management of your trust, all at the expense of creditors and all for your own personal gain. And just one quick note here before proceeding. Uh, grayscale, um, hedge fund, basically for, uh, get, you can get dip your toe in the water in crypto, it's for accredited investors only in the United States. Um, that is also owned by Digital Currency Group, so it's all under the same ownership. Anyway, Winklevoss continues. It is now time for you to take responsibility for this and do the right thing. It's not lost on us 
that you started your career as a bankruptcy restructuring associate. Associate, And it's not lost on us that you've been working desperately to try and firewall Digital Currency Group from the problems that you created at Genesis. You should dispense with this fiction because we all know what you know, that Digital Currency Group and Genesis are beyond co-mingled. Everyone takes orders from you and always has. And anything you have done after the fact to pretend otherwise won't hold up. If instead you had put all of this energy towards finding a resolution, we would have been done by now. Everyone would be in a better place, including you. So I'll just pause and note, the assertion here is that Barry Silbert's looking out for Barry Silbert and not so concerned about uh, all the people that have lost, in some instances, their entire life savings uh, because of money not getting it back into the hands of Gemini. That's the assertion here. And then uh, White Winklevoss wraps up by writing, Earn users are tired. They're scared. Many are now in dire straits. And yet, despite all that, they have had to endure. They have been remarkably patient and supportive. But there is only so much more they can take. They deserve a resolution for a recovery of the assets they lent to you and an end to this nightmare. To that end, and for the final time, we are asking you to publicly commit to working together to solve this problem by January 8th, 2023. We remain ready and willing to work with you, but time is running out. Sincerely, Cameron Winklevoss. So folks, you just got a bit of a peek behind the curtain here. Does this sound like a problem that's small or big? Does this sound like a problem that is going to just go away or a problem that's going to turn into something much worse? Seriously, what do you think? Now you've got a little peek behind the curtains here. I just, again, I, I it's not to scare people. I just, I don't see how things don't get way worse. And so I understand if, if that is what happens, my net worth takes a beating, but I've got cash available to the ready to deploy. I'll buy more stuff and take advantage of it because it's not going to make the cryptocurrency asset class cease to exist. So it, it, it is what it is. I'm, I'm not fearful. It's not, I'm not saying this to spread fear, but if I'm wrong, if I'm really missing the mark, somebody tell me how, please. And I very sincerely mean that because I'm not right about it. I am wrong at times. Of course I am, just like any human. If I'm actually wrong in, in supposing that this is what's most probable, tell me why. That's all I ask. And it's not, I'm not saying with literally 100% conviction, but I think it's quite probable that this gets much more serious. That seems pretty damn likely to me. Uh, now, there was a response from Barry Silbert on this. Barry Silbert didn't like what Cameron Winklevoss wrote here. And so Barry Silbert responded, and this is his only response, which is kind of telling in and of itself. He, you know, he wrote, a Digital Currency Group did not borrow $1.675 billion from Genesis. Digital Currency Group has never missed an interest payment to Genesis and is current on all loans outstanding. Next loan maturity is May 2023. Digital Currency Group delivered to Genesis and your advisors a proposal on December 29th and has not received any, re any response. Oh, Barry Silver, look, Barry Silver makes it sound like everything's fine. Hey, what are you worried about, Cameron Winklevoss? Okay, well then why can't all of their customers withdraw everything that they want to withdraw, Barry Silbert? He, he didn't even address it. You know, and I, I've historically been a, been a fan of Barry Silver. But to not even, like, to pretend like that's not a thing, I was just like, come on, man. I get it. You're a victim too, but now, to what degree are you being the villain? Like, I, it's just, ugh. It's a shame. And, and so Winklevoss responded and said, there you go again. Stop trying to pretend that you and Digital Currency Group are innocent bystanders, but bystanders, and had nothing to do with creating this mess. It's completely disingenuous. <clears throat> so how does Digital Currency Group owe Genesis 1.675 billion if it didn't borrow the money. Oh, right, that promissory note. So I was a positive thing about this. Barry Silbert was going on a technical clarification saying, hey, there's no borrowing there, but the money's owed, as Cameron Winklevoss pointed out. He's not saying it's not owed. That's like, oh my God, on a technicality, what you said isn't true, Cameron Winklevoss. Oh my God, Barry Silbert, Silbert just, just shut your damn mouth. Like, uh, on that, come on, man. That's so disingenuous. Ah. It's so regrettable. I just like I've been a fan of his for, for as so many people have for, for many years. Just in a general sense. Not that I agree with him on everything, but damn. 
And then Cameron Winklevoss says, will you or will you not commit to solving this <coughs> by January 8th in a manner that treats the $1.1 billion promissory note as $1.1 billion? And Barry Silver didn't respond. I think that he's in the weaker position here, which makes me suspect that Cameron Winklevoss is more likely to be saying things that are true, <laughs> you know? So, I don't know. I don't have all the facts, so I can't have... I can't know for sure. But just, just look at the way that this unfolded today. It does not look good for Barry Silbert. And again, look at this massive amount of money. And and look, and if we do see a crash... I don't want to, like, oversell it either. It's, it's like, even if it happens, these crashes, they're short-lived typically, so, like, you have a major crater to whatever degree you know, it is major. It could be for a day or two or three or whatever. It, you know, you find a bottom, maybe it's a week, whatever it is. And then you know, markets do get better. I mean, look at what happened um, in, in in May with the collapse of Luna and then three years capital and Celsius and Voyager. When all those had their insolvency made clear and, and their collapses. Well, you can see how long that impacted the market. It actually didn't take that long for a rebound. So even if I'm right, I, I also don't want to make it sound like this is the end of the world and it's doomsday for it. No, it would be short lived. In fact, I would, fin I would feel a sense of urgency to act quickly if I want to make purchases. And, and I would, I would want to make purchases, major purchases, actually. Some of the largest, if not the largest I've ever made in, in, in my life in crypto. And it, it's, it, I think it'll be short lived. So I, I would move quickly, m me personally. But it, I, I'm, I'm just telling you, but, Look, even if you're not, I'm just, you need to be aware of potentially things that could happen. And if if it doesn't happen, or if there is a collapse here, and then the markets aren't spooked somehow, and it doesn't have some negative impacts in terms of real world implications of people, you know, needing to sell or anyone else getting liquidated, this or that, super duper, you know. But uh, just be aware that this is something that is possible, because that way, if, if it's possible that it could happen, and you're aware of it, it's less likely that any of you listening would feel some sort of negative emotional response. If we see that move to the downside, just be like, well, yeah, this is a thing. We've seen other collapses. You know, it's just, it's crypto and some really bad stuff happened last year. So contagion is contagion, bro. All right, again, let me know what you think. I really would love some feedback on this, but I'm going to wrap up here. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say, all right? That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.